Hey there, I'm so glad that you are here today. We are going to be changing our mind today. You should know that when you look at the Word of God, you're changing your mind and you're changing your future. It is so cool how you can just change what you think, and that will change everything according to the Word of God. Let's acknowledge Him. Jesus, you're so good to us. Thank you for giving us revelation knowledge. The knowing of how we, the only thing we have to do is change our mind, come in agreement with you, and we can have that abundant life that you promised. We love you and praise you. Thank you for teaching us. Give us revelation knowledge. Open our eyes to see even more than we could see before, because we know we haven't even seen a little of all that you have for us. We love you and praise you and give you all the glory. You know, his way is so much higher than our way. He knows so much more than we do. And the revelation knowledge that he gives us is for eternal life. He's so good. He wants us to know. He wants us to understand. And so we need to know that what we think as a man thinks, so is he. That's revelation knowledge. What you think is what you will become. It will pave your future. What you think of yourself is who you are. And so we are in a warfare. Your soul, your life is at stake. Many don't know that the enemy is fighting to take them to hell. He is trying to steal you from God. And you might not even know it because you don't know God. You don't know the Word of God. Your dad loves you, right? You know your dad loves you. And if someone came to try to tell you something different, something bad about him, would you defend him because you know him and love him? Of course you would. You wouldn't listen. You would say, shut up. And that's what God wants you to know. He is your father. He's in love with you. He has good for you. And the enemy is coming to you and telling you lies. And his, his power is in your thinking, if you allow him in your thinking. If you don't know that he wants to take over your thinking, that that is how he devours you, then he can do it. But as soon as you know that truth, as soon as you get that revelation knowledge to know that he can't come in your thinking unless you allow him to, that you have authority over him, Take captive every thought and make it obedient to the word of God. And if you don't take captive every thought, the enemy is going to overtake you. So the very knowing that we have to take captive our thoughts is knowing that's where his playground is. That's where he messes with you. And because we don't give attention to the word of God, we don't know the word of God He's messing with you all the time and you don't even know it. You get this bright idea and you think, oh, wow, I never thought of that. Of course not. It's the enemy trying to get you in trouble. He's trying to steal you from God. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to take you from him. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not carrying our warfare according to the flesh using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overflow and destruction of strongholds. So we should refute arguments, anything anything that exalts itself above the word of God, any reasoning, any theory that exalts itself above the true knowledge of God, we aren't to think it. I heard a man say once, a time ago, to strain your thoughts. If it's not a God thought, don't think it. Because if you think it, Satan has a hold on you. In the garden, he said to Adam, to Eve, did God really say? And he's going to come and tell you the opposite of what God said. And better if you don't know the word, because then you don't even know you're being fooled. But God is telling you today to be careful what you hear. Jesus said, be careful what you hear. Decide what you're going to hear. On purpose, think 
the right thoughts. Because if you don't, the enemy is going to come in your thinking and he's just going to mess with you. Like I said, he's going to mess with you. He's going to tell you lies and you're going to believe him because you don't know the truth. And if you do know the truth, he's still going to try to find a way in to get you to do what he wants you to do. He wants to be in control of you. He wants to take you with him. He knows the end of the book. He knows he's doomed. And he wants to take you. He wants to take anyone he can have. He wants to be in control of you. He's trying to steal you from your dad, from your father. You were made in his likeness. You're his. You're not the enemy's. But he's trying to take you. And it's up to you whether you allow him to or not. And it's in your thinking that this warfare starts. So you got to decide. You're going to pay attention to the word. You're going to get to know the word because the word is God. And you're going to think his thoughts. You're going to think the word of God. And when you think the word of God, when you strain everything through, when you pass everything through the word of God, then you're going to live that good, godly life here. You're going to live with your dad who cares for you and loves you and looks out for you and has a plan for your welfare, for truth, for good, for everlasting life with him. But if you don't think his thoughts and you think the lie, the lie is going to tell you he doesn't care. He's just trying to dictate to you. Now, are you going to let him lie about your father? You were made in the likeness of God. Are you going to let the enemy lie about your father to you? Are you going to tell him to shut up, that you're on to him, and you're not going to think his thoughts? You're not going to believe him. That's how it is. That's the truth that many don't know. And that's why just like in the day of Noah, many are eating and drinking and getting married and in getting married, still married, not oblivious to what is going to happen. And so they drown. And the father grieves. And it's about to happen again. Jesus is going to come. And if you didn't, if you don't know what's going to happen to you, if you let the enemy lie to you, what's going to happen to you? Start thinking about your future. Where are you going from here? What's happening? Do you know? And if you don't know, if you're only guessing, you're only hoping so, then it's time to get to know your dad so that you can move in with him when you leave here. Take captive every thought. That's where it starts. The revelation is in your thinking. If you think, I can't, I'm not good enough, you won't. Because what you think is what you will become. And so the enemy comes into your thought life and he lies to you and tells you you can't. You're not good enough. You're stupid. You're too this, you're too that. And he plays this game with you constantly and he's laughing when you believe him as he puts you down and discourages you or gets you to hurt yourself or gets you to hurt someone else. He's got an evil plot against God's children. And he could use you to perform his evil if you allow him to. But we are to bind him. We are to stop him. We are to take authority over him. Jesus said, all authority and power has been given unto me. Now I'm giving it to you. You go. You do what I was doing. Be aware of what is happening. Jesus said, if you don't understand this one thing, this one thing, you won't understand anything. As soon as you hear the word of God, the enemy is going to come and try to take it from you. He's going to come and try to steal the word from you. Because when he steals a word from you, he steals everything. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and God is his word. So as soon as God comes with 
an instruction with a revelation, the enemy's going to come and try to take it just like he did with Adam and Eve. He said, don't eat off any, you can eat anything you want except don't eat off this tree. And so the enemy comes and says, did God really say, of course you can do that. So God says to forgive if you want to live in my kingdom. Love. It's the most important command. So the enemy comes and says, you don't have to forgive. Look what they did to you. God hates pride, so of course he's going to get you prideful. Right? So you don't have to forgive. Look what they did to you. And then you're hurt and you're haughty and you carry that with you. And then you have sickness and disease and sorrow and pain and broken relationships. Forgive so your father can forgive you. Forgive. Just let it go. Let it drop. Because he said so. Because he knows what's good for you. Just like your dad, your earthly dad. What he tells you to do is what's good for you. What you tell your children to do is good for them. You don't want any harm to come on them. And so you tell them the truth. You tell them good. And that's what God is telling us, the truth. I'm telling you good. Forgive. Let it drop. Let it go. Love. Give me a tenth of your income so I can take care of you, so I can open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing you won't have enough room for it. So you can get to know me. You know, when you do his instruction, you actually get to know him. If you never tithe and you never give and you won't forgive and you won't love, you're really not going to ever know him. Because he manifests himself to the one who will obey him. You won't know him. You won't even know what you're missing. You won't even know that when the trumpet sounds, what's happening. You won't know that Jesus is about to come. You won't have any idea what I'm talking about. You're going to think I'm way out there. But when you give God a chance... He shows you. He gives you revelation knowledge. You get to know who he is and, and what's happening. And the real, the real importance of life. It's heaven or hell. Right here and right now, you got to make your choice. So you have to decide what you're going to think so you can make the right choice. The first decision is, I, I'm going to believe in God. Because the first thing the enemy is going to say is, God isn't real. And when you say, I'm going to believe he is, what harm can it do you? It can do you more harm if you don't believe, because then on that day when you stand before him, and, oh my, he's really real, here he is. I made the wrong choice. So the first thing you have to decide is he's real. And then if he's real, of course, you got to get to know him. He's a person. He's your dad. You were made in his likeness. So you look at the word of God. Jesus said, if you don't understand this, you won't understand anything. As soon as you hear the word of God, so as soon as you look at the word of God, Satan's going to come and try to steal God from you. And he's not going to quit. He's going to keep trying and trying and trying. Because he wants to take authority over you. He knows you have authority over him as God's child. He knows that. But if he can fool you into thinking that he has authority over you, that you have to be afraid of him. When he puts that pressure and that fear on you, when you start following God, he's trying to get you to quit and back down. It's just fake. He has no power. You have authority over him. And the more you look at the word, the more you're going to have understanding. And the more understanding you have, the more understanding you're going to get. And the easier it's going to become for you because you're going to recognize him. He doesn't come and say, hey, I'm here. I'm here to trick you and fool you. He comes dressed as an angel of light. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, this age, 
fashioned after, adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself which is the, which is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. When I start changing my mind is when I start looking at the word of God and seeing the things I didn't know that were true about him. And people will tell me, God won't do this and God won't do that and this about God. And I didn't believe him anymore because I proved for myself his will is good and acceptable and perfect because I tried it. I got to know him and I believed him and what he promised came to pass. When you do what he tells you to do, it will happen. When you are careful about what you hear. You can go to church. You can go to a church and hear a lie. And if you don't strain it, if you don't compare it to the word of God, you're going to ignorantly believe that lie. Maybe because you were too lazy to get out the book and look yourself. Which that is not something you want to be lazy about. Because on that day, what are you going to say to Jesus? I was too lazy to open the book, so I just believed what I heard. So it's not my fault, it's their fault. No. He's going to stay away from me. I never knew you. You never opened the book to get to know me. Many are going to call me Lord because everybody thinks everybody goes to heaven. And that it's easy. And that you don't have to do anything. Not everyone goes to heaven. And you do have to do something. You have to get to know Jesus. He's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. The way you think is how you get there. And if you're thinking wrong, if you go to church because they tell you what you want to hear, it's easy, it's okay, and you hear a lie, then you're going to live that lie and the enemy is going to win that battle. That battle for your soul. There is a real battle going on. God wants all of his children it's not as well that even one should perish. He doesn't even want one of us to miss it. He loves you. And so I'm giving you this message today. Be careful what you think. Don't think the lies. Because when you think them, you're going to walk into them. And you're going to live that lie. And then you're going to continue to live that lie when you leave here. It's up to you as an individual. If you're going to go to a church, make sure that they're teaching what is in the Word of God. Make sure they're not teaching a lie. Make sure they're not a false prophet. Jesus said, beware of them. Some churches are in a business of making money. They don't care about the people, yet they act like they do. But all they really want, seriously, is your money. I'm not saying all churches are like that. And, you know, of course, we have to support God's kingdom, and that's why we tithe. But just don't go to a church where they're going to tell you a lie. And make sure you know the truth. You can't blame them because they, they lie to you. Jesus said many will call him Lord. Many who call him Lord will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, not everyone. And many will say to him on that day, but Lord, I did this and I did that. I went to church. I casted out demons. And he's going to say, away from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. And so there, there's something that you don't know. What is he saying? Get on your knees and find out. Because... If not everyone who calls him Lord, and you're calling him Lord, and you think just because you're calling him Lord, or just because you did that, just because you went to church, that you're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Do you know him? Do you hear him talk to you? Are you careful that you only hear him? That's what he's saying today. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you're listening to. Don't think just any old thought.
make sure you're thinking the Word of God. And if you're too lazy to look at it, I'm sorry to say you might miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss eternal life. The earth is going to burn. Jesus is waiting for you to open the book and get to know him. He said that he's long-suffering. He's not here yet because we're not getting ready. Then when you know him, he's going to help you to be recreated in his likeness so you fit in to heaven. So he's going to teach you what's right and wrong. He's going to teach you his character. And then when you take on his character, you're going to fit into the kingdom. Many stop there. I don't want anyone telling me what to do. I don't want Jesus telling me what to do. Well, then you don't want to live in eternal in heaven with him. God said to me one day, my children think they're coming to live with me, but still here and now they don't agree with me. They don't want nothing to do with me. They don't have time for me. And so what you're thinking is really foolish, silly, unrealistic. If you want to move in with him, you got to make the changes. you got to take the time to look at the Word. And the Word is exciting. It's revelation knowledge. Don't you want to know what's going on? Or all of a sudden, you know, like in the day of Noah, it's raining from the sky? Who heard such a thing? Noah said it would, but we didn't believe him. The earth was watered from the ground up. They never saw rain before. Jesus is coming on a cloud. You're going to hear thunder, the trumpet. He's going to get out his sword. And you don't want to be against him. You want to be for him. And if you don't choose him, you're against him. He's going to come for the one that knows him, the one that got out the book and changed what they thought and came against his enemy. No one's going to talk about your father like that. That's the attitude we should have. Don't talk about my Jesus like that, Satan. Get out of here. His access is in your thinking through the mouths of others. The television, Facebook, what you look at. Be careful what you're looking at. Be careful what you hear. This is an awesome message today from Jesus. He wants you to know he's preparing us for his return. He's even asking you to go for him. He said, if you believe me, you're going to do what I was doing and even more. He's really asking you to be a part of his life, to prepare the way for him. He's coming and there's stuff he needs done. And you are a part of that. And if you're not, you're really a part of the kingdom of darkness, you're against him. If you're not for him, you're against him, he said. If you never ask Jesus to come live on the inside of you, Revelation 3.20, he said, if you heed his voice, he'll come and he'll dine with you. If you heed his voice, if you're not going to listen to him, if you're going to listen to the enemy, he's not going to live on the inside of you. So you say, said that prayer before, and then you walked away. He's not there. That's why you can't hear him. I hear many say he doesn't talk to me because you're not listening. Because you're following after the enemy. You can't do both. You got to choose, and you got to choose now. And so let's say that prayer. Let's say a prayer. And either you can recommit or. You can commit for the first time. Let's pray, Jesus. Thank you for telling us truth today. Thank you for getting in our face now so we know ahead of time what we have to do to be ready. Thank you for teaching us that hell is real and we got to make a real choice right now. And we commit right now to heed your voice. And we need your help to do that. We love you, Jesus. We thank you and praise you for telling us truth, even though it doesn't always feel so good at the moment. Help us. Help us. We can't do anything without you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you and praise you and give you all the glory. He is so good. He's so in love with you. We got revelation knowledge today. 
at all, just let it go. Put it in your pocket. Pay attention to the word. Faith comes from hearing the word. Happiness comes from hearing the word. Jesus said, I'm telling you all this so my joy can be in you. You can live in heaven on the earth if you follow after him, if you obey him. I don't believe the lie of the enemy and say, okay, now you said that prayer, you get to go to heaven. No. He's a person and he wants a real relationship with you. He wants to talk to you, teach you, prepare you to enter into the kingdom of heaven and as well do a work for him on the earth to help, to be a part of his kingdom, to make it help him so that none will perish. You have a part to do. When you when you live in a family, you have a part in that family. This is your part. To go for him, to do his work, to prepare for him, to be recreated in his likeness. Okay, thanks so much for listening today. God bless you.